there are a lot of good reasons why you might want to capture video game footage. Maybe you want to do machinima or possibly video reviews or maybe you just want to put porno soundtracks to video game cutscenes. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to help. And with good reason, I've spent about $1,000 over the last couple of years trying to get a good result from video capture. In that time I've learned there are two major factors. Both of them have to do with how much data you're dealing with. The first, and the major one, is resolution. The three main resolutions that you're going to run into are standard definition at 480p or thereabouts, high definition at 720p, and full high definition at 1080p. If what you want to capture is just standard definition, then you're in luck. It's actually very easy to do, there's not a lot of data to deal with, and you don't have huge hardware requirements for it. This is what you need, it's a Roxio Game Cap. This is a dedicated solution for capturing video game footage. I don't think that actually makes any difference to the internals, it just changes the box, but I guess that's important to some people. What this is, is a simple USB device which makes it very simple to set up, very simple to use. The hardware and software are both very easy to use. You can get these at any good video game store. However, the simplicity of these comes as a negative as well. These are a standard definition device. They can't capture anything in HD. In fact, 480p is its maximum resolution. If what you want to do is capture something like the Wii or possibly something at the low end of YouTube for a Let's Play or, or a video like that, then this device will do a very good job. But I'd like to think that people are a little bit more ambitious than that in general and want to capture HD, especially in the time of HD consoles. Unfortunately, the step up to HD is a lot harder than it sounds. You see, the resolutions I listed before are the vertical resolution or the number of lines in the image. If you double the number of lines, therefore, for example, you don't actually get double the amount of data you get quadruple. That amount of data when you go from standard definition to high definition just makes it too much for USB 2 to handle. That's when you need devices like this. This is the Blackmagic Intensity Pro. And it certainly is one, it's not just a sound card I ripped out of a computer to use as a prop. This is a professional level capture hardware solution. It'll capture anything in up to 1080p and 30 frames a second and does an exceptional job including capturing HDMI which makes it a lot easier and is one of the differences between this sort of professional solution and the game cap. There's not much more to say about this but there are a few negatives. This is not a USB device, this is an add-on card so you're going to need a dedicated desktop to plug it into and it will work on PC and Mac but you will need a PCI Express slot waiting. To conclude, I could actually probably conclude this whole video. This device is the one you want. This is going to do a professional job of anything you want to capture. In fact, this is probably doing the professional video capture for every video review you've ever seen. It's about $199, which is still not too bad for the type of product it is, and is going to do an exceptional job. Aside from the hardware requirement, there's no other reason to not want this card. Still, there's a few other devices that I want to talk about, so I'm going to keep talking, despite the fact that everybody's lost interest. The next thing to talk about is this. This is the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle. If that sounds exactly the same as the Intensity Pro, it kind of is. This is the USB brother of that device. I know I said USB isn't enough to handle the data, but this, in this case, is actually USB 3, not USB 2, and that is enough for uncompressed data. The benefits of this device are basically the same as the Intensity Pro, only because it's an external device, you don't have to reach around the back of your computer as much. However, there are a few negatives that really take this device down. For example, it doesn't fucking work. The core of the problem is USB 3. USB 3 is a pretty immature technology and the implementation of it in this device is so juvenile that you can hear it giggle if you say the word tits. There are only two motherboards supported by the device manufacturer, maybe one add-on card and no laptops at all regardless of whether they have USB 3. Even if you have the hardware to support it, and I do, it's an absolute nightmare getting the firmware, drivers, software, patches, and various other things to get this thing working, and even then, it seems to be a crapshoot whether it's going to work or not. It's impossible to recommend this card in its current state. It's basically unsupported by software, it's unsupported by hardware, and it seems to be unsupported by the manufacturer as well, because they haven't updated any of these issues in about a year and a half. There's no reason to get this over the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, the add-in card. It's basically the same device, except that it works. Now I know I said before that there are two major factors in video capture. One of them is resolution, the other is compression. These devices, the Blackmagics in particular, are intended to capture uncompressed video for the highest possible quality. 
but the highest possible quality means an absolute shit ton of data. Even if you can get it through something like USB, and you can through USB 3, you still can't actually write it to your hard drive because it's not fast enough to keep it up. There's a lot of solutions to this that involve solid state or RAID, and they're quite frankly expensive, and the best solution is don't even try to capture uncompressed data. Thankfully the Blackmagic cards do support a form of data compression, it's called Motion JPEG, essentially they take each frame and make it a JPEG. It's an awful way to store data, it makes it about a gig a minute and is quite frankly horrific. But it works and it gets it under the threshold required to get it to save to your hard drive. There are better solutions though, better codecs and formats that you can save in. The most common and probably the most useful is something called H.264. This is the format that's used by small players like YouTube and Apple to compress their videos, so obviously it's something you'd want to use. Unfortunately though, the hardware requirement to save these kind of things is pretty serious and is actually outside the scope of something like the Blackmagic devices. They can't do it at all. But there are devices that can. This device, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the manufacturer because I'll just embarrass myself, but the device is the HD PVR. It's intended to capture from a set-top box, and while it looks like it's got a hard drive inside and it's easily big enough to hold one, it actually doesn't. It uses your hard drive, connects to it by USB, and just saves directly on your computer. Unfortunately, while the principle is sound, the practice is pretty iffy, and I had an awful lot of trouble with the device, which makes it hard to recommend at all. Basically, the software is nastier than a hobo threesome, and the drivers didn't work particularly well, and it didn't seem to work with any of the software that it was claimed to work with. I had more trouble getting this to work than the shuttle, in fact I stopped using this to buy the shuttle because I expected it to work better, but you see how that went. On top of that, while it records HD, it only records as a maximum of 720p, so it won't record 1080p at all. And it does it with component, which is the best plug you can put in, no HDMI, so the quality is lower still. As well as that, there's some artifacting and just poor quality issues that occur because this is not a professional solution. It doesn't do as good job as the professional and it costs about $400, making it twice as much money. The only reason to use this device is if you can't use a desktop machine and have to plug something into a laptop with USB. Even then, I only grudgingly recommend this. Other people's experiences have been better than mine, but mine has certainly been less than stellar. The last device I'm going to be talking about here today is the H.264 Pro Recorder, another Blackmagic device. I couldn't actually afford to get hold of the roughly $500 card, so I've used Cutting Edge CG to simulate the ownership experience. Much like the HD PVR we looked at a minute ago, this thing records and captures H.264, encodes it in real time and stores it on your own computer. Because the files are quite small, being H.264, they record easily and can be transmitted through USB 2, so there's not a lot of setup required. Where this differs from the HD PVR is that this is a professional level solution. In fact, it's even more professional than the other Blackmagic devices. The Pro Recorder even includes inputs for SDI, which is a professional level input that, quite frankly, I'd never heard of till I looked into this device. It's used by professionals, and this device is intended to be used by professionals. One thing it doesn't do that every device mentioned before this has done is pass through. It doesn't actually continue the signal beyond itself, so if you want to capture something like HDMI, you've got to split the signal, and devices to split HDMI signals are as expensive or more expensive than the item itself. The simple fact is that while this thing is cool, it's well above your needs, it's well above my needs, and I, I really just thought it was cool. Before I go, a quick word on capturing from the PS3 specifically. HDMI is the standard output for both consoles, PS3 and Xbox 360, and it's definitely the one to use because it's the simplest cable and is, quite frankly, the most widely supported. However, with HDMI also comes HDCP. HDCP, the CP does not stand for what you think, but is in fact a form of copy protection. The Xbox 360 does implement HDCP, but it does it selectively. For example, things like Netflix will block you from capturing so you can't record their videos because apparently you're a pirate who's never heard of a torrent. In any case, while Xbox 360's implementation is reasonable, the PS3 implements HDCP all the time on digital signals, so HDMI is always encrypted with HDCP. The fact that there are legitimate reasons, entirely legal and useful, to want to capture PS3 footage doesn't make a difference. You cannot do it. If you want to capture video footage from a PS3, you'll have to use Component or something like that, which reduces the quality, but admittedly not appreciably.